Hey guys, before we get into the video, I want to let you know that I posted all 37 of our SHOT Show videos for this year to our new Ultimate Survival Tips show on CarbonTV.com so you don't have to wait for me to roll them out over time or get frustrated when I post 30 videos at once to YouTube. To get instant free access to every SHOT Show video, click the link on your screen or the link in the video description on YouTube so you can register for cool monthly gear giveaways and grab your free subscription to Ultimate Survival Tips on Carbon TV. Hey guys, so I was walking around and I saw a Spyderco booth and I connected with Mike here. Mike, thanks for being with me. Thanks, Dave. Appreciate and it. I've actually never I've never done anything Spyderco, so I was interested in what you got new going on, maybe something uh, that the bushcrafters might be interested in. You, and in, you pulled out this. Tell me a little bit more about what you got here. Cool. Be happy to. This is called the Aqua Salt, and this is actually a knife that was in the Spyderco line for a number of years as part of our Salt series, which is our H1 steel knives. And we discontinued it. As soon as we did, we just got flack from everybody. They wanted us to bring it back. Who specifically? Um, in a lot of cases, military folks. We okay. didn't realize how deep a penetration we had into the military market, how popular this particular model was with the military guys. And uh, in a lot of cases, what we found is they were trying to do things to it to be able to subdue it. The, the version we had before was a satin finished blade, mm -hmm. and obviously in a tactical environment, shiny stuff gets you shot. Right. So what we wanted to do was basically meet their needs. They had been doing improvised, you know, spray painting and stuff like that. We decided to bring it back with a TICN coating, so a titanium carbonitride nice. coating. Not only bring it back, but bring it back for the audience that was screaming the loudest for us to bring it back. Yep. So what's unique about it, first of all, is it's H1 steel. And H1 steel, what's really unique is it's completely rust proof. A lot of people talk about stainless steel in traditional sense. Stainless steel is anything that has at least about 13% chromium in it and a normal carbon content. That makes it stain resistant. Technically, they call it stain less. The less part is what you want to focus on. <laughs> it's not that it doesn't stain, it doesn't rust, it just is more resistant to it. H1 is different because when you take a traditional steel, what you do is you add carbon to iron to make steel. With this, you add nitrogen to iron to make steel. So the nitrogen replaces the carbon, gives it steel-like properties, but because there's no carbon in the steel that would react with chloride, which is what makes rust, it's immune to rust. You can soak this thing in salt water and it's not going to rust. I just learned something. Yeah. I totally did not know that. That's true. Thanks, that's man. that's one of the things. I came here to be educated. <laughs> well, you came to the right place. <laughs> <laughs> so H1 is unique in that regard. It's also unique that it's an austenitic steel. So when you look at the, the metallurgical process of making a typical knife blade, all steel starts out in an austenitic form. And that's basically the crystalline structure of the steel. So it's soft. It's an annealed form. When you heat treat it, when you heat it up to critical temperature, cool it down real quickly in the quench, and then temper it, what you're creating is a martensitic crystalline structure. So it makes it really hard, then you temper it to soften it to a, a usable degree. So you get that balance of flexibility and ductility, toughness, and still having a sharp edge. With an austenitic steel, it actually work hardens. So the abrasive process of shaping the steel is what makes it hard. So it's kind of like when you take, uh, if you took a piece of metal and you bend it back and forth, how it kind of gets hard at that edge and it finally snaps. Right. That's work hardening. Okay. Well, in this case, the grinding process, that abrasive process, actually creates micro stresses in the steel. And those build up over time. So the areas that are worked more end up becoming harder. So the edge is going to be harder than the bevel, so the bevels will be a little bit harder than the back. So what you get is a differential hardness property that typically you only get from really expensive custom knives where a maker like a blacksmith can harden it and then be able to go back with a torch and selectively soften the back of the blade while leaving the edge hard. We get that in the manufacturing process. So it's completely rust proof, it's extremely tough, and you also get that differential hardness property, which in a, a production knife is pretty extraordinary. That's pretty cool. I mean, sometimes we throw around different compositions of steel, but it's important to know what you got because a knife is made out of steel. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, with an, the blade is going to be the heart of the knife. That's I mean, right. if, unless you're buying something for aesthetic purposes, if it's a symbolic item, yeah, you're, right. you want to cut stuff with it. That's right. And one of the interesting things about this, I actually um, had a chance a couple of years ago, Spyderco went up and visited with the SEER school, the survival school up in Maine, for the Navy and for the Marine Corps. So a number of these knives were in service with the instructors up there, and these guys are the instructors. They're the ones who teach all the pilots how to survive, how to evade if they're shot down behind enemy lines. So these are the experts. Yep. And we went up there, and you know, we 
were on our A game because we knew we were talking to them. And I was really curious to see what they thought of this particular knife. And it was one guy in particular who was there. He was the guru of the gurus as far as the survival instructors. And I said, what do you think of it? And he's like, well, what do you think I thought of it? I said, well, you probably didn't like it that much right out of the box. But once you used it for a while and once you sharpened it a few times, you liked it better. He's like, how did you know that? I said, because this steel, because it work hardens, out of the box is slightly softer than a traditional knife. So what you'll find, you compare this with BG-10, CPM S30V, any other traditional stainless steel, they're going to be a higher Rockwell hardness right out of the box. So they're going to retain an edge a little bit longer. This one will dull sooner during normal use. But then when you sharpen it, that's an abrasive process makes the edge a little bit harder. So second time holds an edge a little bit longer, third time a little bit longer. So since you're almost seasoning the steel, you're, you're yeah, bringing that's a good way to a put very it. desirable property, which right. is sharpness. The Rockwell hardness of the actual cutting edge increases over okay. time with increased use. The guy said, after six months, I love it. I wouldn't trade this in for anything because they were up there in Maine, obviously very humid climate, right on the right. coast. They did a lot of stuff in close proximity or in salt water. And he said it's the easiest knife he's had to maintain. It's just once it got to that point where he seasoned the edge, to use your term, it was it was his favorite. He didn't, wouldn't trade it in for anything. Oh, that's, that's good information. Man. Yeah. So what else you got with the knife or the sheath? Well, this handle is fiberglass reinforced nylon, and it's shot directly, molded directly onto uh, the handle. So a lot of people look at this and say, oh, it's plastic. Nylon is much tougher than plastic. There's lots of different types of plastic. Plastic is a very generic term. So when you think about fiberglass reinforced nylon, fiberglass woven into the into the nylon injection molded into it gives it really good structural strength and the fact that it's molded right onto the blade makes the entire thing really one integral unit what's neat about it too i know in a lot of cases bushcrafters like really smooth handles because they're using the specific bushcrafting methodology to cut things they want to make sure they don't have any hot spots because they don't want to fatigue get blisters and, and all that type of thing this kind of balances the idea of a really secure grip with also, also one that is user friendly over time. So what you have are smooth surfaces on the top and the bottom here, but then you have Spyderco's patented bi-directional texturing here. So the bi-directional texturing, it's actually steps that face in one direction on one side, the other direction on the other. So no matter which hand you, which way your hand may slide, it's always biting into those and giving you a solid grip. But at no point is it ever really abrasive or uncomfortable. It also has a unique shape. When you look at the shape of the grip, it basically brackets the hand between an integral guard here and a pinky hook here with a nice palm swell in the middle. So when you grip this, even if your hands are cold and wet, it's bracketed between those two. So if you're pulling, no problem. If you're driving forward, no problem. Your hand is controlled between those two. There's no way for it to slide onto the edge or for you to lose control over the tool. Nice. When it comes to the sheath, the sheath is injection molded polymer with a snap fit. So it's a simple insert and stick it in. So if it's something where you had to draw your knife, cut something, and then be able to put it away quickly, it has a flared mouth on the sheath. It's very easy to index, very easy to replace the knife when it's out of use. We use grommets instead of rivets as far as the construction of the sheath, and we make the sheath completely symmetrical. That does a couple of things. First of all, the grommets, if you wanted to lash it onto a pack, lash it onto molly gear or something like that, Simple 550 cord, very easy to attach. You set it up any way you want. You can do angular adjustment. It's very user friendly. It's not necessarily an out of the box attachment method, right. but it's so easy, it's it's a no brainer. It's simple and it's versatile. And exactly. It works. Exactly. Yep. The G clip attachment is nice because it allows you to attach this to a belt, but you could also clip it onto other gear. If you want to wear it as an inside the waistband thing, you don't need to have a belt. So if you were in a situation where maybe you didn't have a belt available, you're wearing shorts, whatever, you could still carry the knife with you. If you're using it around water and you're wearing, you know, board shorts or, you know, whatever, you could clip it onto that as well. It fits on either side of the sheet, so no matter where you want to wear it, where, how you want to configure it, it's versatile that way. And it's also angular adjustable, so you can have a forward cant, a rearward cant, you could even carry it horizontally if you wanted to get the small of your back. So the sheath is also very versatile, and again, absolutely no hardware on the sheath that could ever corrode or rust. And one of the other things to think about with this is this is the plain edge version, but there also is a fully serrated version of this as well. Some people prefer the serrations. They like the fact that they stay sharper longer. It's something that you can use in the field for a very long time. Um, so if you want that option, again, it's something that we provide, something that we can give you for, for use in the long run. That's cool. So availability, when, when will this be available or is it available now? Uh, this one, we should be receiving our shipments of this from our manufacturer in Japan within the next one to two months. So during first quarter of uh, 
of 2015. Okay. I'm writing all the, the product literature for this as soon as I get back from the SHOT Show. So once okay. all that stuff is done, we get it all packaged up, I would say uh, probably around the end of first quarter, they should be shipping and available out, out okay. in the market. So we'll put a link in the video description of the website so people can follow that. And if you want to let me know when it's available, we'll get links right to the product. Be happy to do that. that and a lot stuff. of people are probably curious, what's the price? MSRP on this is $179.95, okay. and that's the full retail price. Everyone okay. knows with the internet these days, with all the street different- Street price is gonna be much, you know- Street price gonna is gonna be, be much more affordable. Yep. So it's, we want to bring it back, not only better, but also bring it back at a price point that's gonna make it affordable and achievable for the folks out there who want to use right. it most. Right, man, I, you educated me. This is awesome. Awesome, my and, pleasure. Um, maybe, maybe we can take a look at another, maybe a everyday carry blade too. Be happy to. You got time? Yep, let me grab some. All right, cool, thanks man. My pleasure. For your convenience, I've included links to all the gear that we've mentioned in the video description on YouTube. Just click the show more tab under this video. So don't forget to subscribe to this channel on YouTube and the Ultimate Survival Tips show on Carbon TV. And for more gear reviews, survival tips, and survival news, check out ultimatesurvivaltips.com. And while you're there, grab our free survival e-mag, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter to get the latest news and be the first to hear about the great gear giveaway contest we have planned. Okay, this is David. I hope to see you on the other side. And remember, be prepared because you never know 